Hello everyone. Welcome back to the second part of case study method lecture. In the first part, we had a discussion on the conceptual element of doing a case study research. Now in this part, we will be discussing technical and procedural aspects of doing a case study research. What I mean by technical and procedural aspect is basically how you should think about the key element of your research if you are using a case study as your research methodology. That means we, we will be discussing the manner in which you need to clarify and define your research problem and the way you may collect and analyze data and the way you may present and report your data if you are following a case study research design. However, before we do that, we need to clarify and differentiate between two types of case studies. The first category or the first type of case studies is what we call educational case studies. I am sure that you should have already come across these educational case studies in other accounting, finance or management courses. The educational case studies have been originally developed by North American business schools such as Harvard, MIT, Sloan, Ivy and so on. So they are developed as pedagogical or a training or educational tools. The purpose is to develop a decision scenario which then can be used as the basis for classroom discussion and learning. A well-experienced, a professor, trainer, educator or a consultant. The people who have good access to the real life decision-making conditions would write a story, would write a narrative about a particular managerial problem. So educational case studies will have information, a story and a narrative about a real life managerial problem. So as a student or a trainee, you need to go through this story and understand the nature of the problem. Analyze the given set of information or data relevant to that particular problem. And then you will be asked to take a particular role perspective. So you are asked to become either an accountant, management accountant, consultant, CEO, marketing director, production manager and so on. So there will be a specific role perspective that the student has to take. So taking that particular role perspective, the student has to analyze the case, information given in the case and make a set of decisions and justify it and present it to the other people relevant. So that is what we mean by an educational case study. So to repeat it again, an educational case study is a pedagogical tool, training tool or educational tool that tries to bring the real life managerial situations or scenarios into a classroom environment. And they are very often written by well-experienced trainers, consultants and academics who do have a good access to the real life problem conditions. The second type of case studies is what we call academic, analytical or research case studies. In comparison to the educational case studies, these academic or research case studies do have a different purpose, different orientation and a different perspective. Now, when it comes to the educational case studies, as we already discussed, the primary purpose is to bring a real life managerial situation into a classroom through a narrative or a story so that the real life managerial situation become problem to be solved, problem to be solved by 
a set of people, ASI you mean a specific set of managerial roles or the perspectives. So you would become a manager, an accountant, CEO, production manager, consultant and so on and analyze the case and make a decision. So there is a problem to be solved. So the reality is translated into a story which is a problem to be solved by taking a prescribed role perspective by a set of people. Now in comparison to that, academic research is not done with that purpose. The academic research does not translate a real life situation into a classroom situation. Instead, the academic research analyzes the specific reality problem in order to develop or in order to construct a specific set of knowledge about that reality condition. So the aim is explanation. The aim is articulation of an argument. The aim is to theorize. So at the end of an academic case study, what do you have? You have a specific set of argument regarding how and why a particular practice, accounting, finance or management or social or political practice is reproduced in that particular locality. And the view you are taking, the angle you are taking or the perspective you are taking is an outsider perspective, not an insider perspective. You are not taking the role of a manager, problem solver. No, you instead you are taking the role of a researcher. As a sociologist, anthropologist, critical account researcher, mainstream account researcher, management researcher, whatever it is, you are taking the role of the researcher. So you are an outsider. And you have a theoretical angle. So you use a theoretical uh, perspective, certain theories, concepts and uh, so on in order to theorize the practice, in order to provide an explanation as to why and how that particular reality is being reproduced there. That is the purpose of academic research. To summarize, in the case of academic research, the academic research is not necessarily problem solving oriented. Instead, academic research is argumentative, aim at constructing a knowledge, a higher order conceptual theoretical knowledge. And academic research is not taking an insider perspective, but outsider perspective. It is not, the reality is not seen as a manager or a consultant or as an insider. Instead, the reality is being analyzed, theorized and understood as a researcher. And academic research is not normative. Instead, academic research is descriptive, positive or argumentative. That means in academic research, you are not trying to provide an answer to the problem or what should be done, what ought to be done, what, what is the decisions to be made. Now, that is not the perspective you are taking in academic research. Instead, the academic research describes, academic research explains and academic research develop an argument about the reality. So therefore it is argumentative, descriptive and positive. In comparison to the normative orientation of educational research. So that's the difference between educational case study and an academic case study. So in the case of your dissertation project, what is more relevant? It is the academic research or the analytical research which should be the focus of your dissertation. Now, with that understanding of the difference between an educational case study and an academic case study, we are in a position to go and discuss how we should understand and appreciate each key element of our research process. Now, the first element that we have to discuss here is the definition or the clarification of your research problem and aims. Irrespective of the methodology you use, the definition and clarification of the research problem should be the very first step or the ideal starting point of your research project. A good dissertation would have a very clear discussion 
a very clear justification of a well-focused research problem in the very first chapter of your dissertation. Now, when it comes to the clarification and the justification of research problem, we have to understand that the manner in which you clarify and justify your research problem depends on the research methodology you are going to use. There should be a connection between the methodology that you are using and the manner in which you spell out your research problem. Now, when it comes to the case study method, as we already discussed, the case study does not intend to provide empirical or statistical generalization. Case studies emphasize, signify the particular or idiosyncratic nature of the reality that you are discussing. So your aim is, as we discussed earlier, to theorize, to contextualize, and to particularize the specific case-related findings and analysis. So therefore, you have to spell out your research problem and research aim in that particular manner. You have to spell out your research problem in a such a manner that you say that your aim or your problem is to understand and explore this particular problem in a given particular reality situation. Now, in order to understand this particular point better, let's go to an example. A journal paper as an example. So, I have chosen one good paper by Brendan O'Dwyer. This paper was published in Accounting Organizations and Society, one of the highest ranking accounting journal. And the title of the paper is The Construction of a Social Account, a Case Study in an Overseas Agency. So the title itself very nicely highlight. So this is a case study. And Brendan explains the research focus or the aims and the question as follows. So he keep on telling that this paper presents a case study examining the social accounting process in Iris Overseas Agency or Aid Agency. So the manner in which he spell out the research problem here very specifically tells about a particular case, a particular condition, a particular situation. So his research question or the research problem is how and why social accounting process evolved within APSO, which is the particular case that he is studying. Focusing in particular on the extent of stakeholder empowerment within the process. So this basically employ, uh, imply that he is going to use stakeholder theory and is going to use a variation of stakeholder theory or something associated with stakeholder theory. So there is a, some sort of a theoretical tweak in here and a concentration on a specific case and articulating the particular accounting problem that he wants to study. So the accounting problem that he wants to study is the manner in which the social accounting process evolved in this particular company. So that's how he spells it out. So as exemplified in this particular example paper, when you are defining your research problem for a case study, so you have to think about very carefully to spell out your research problem such that you are concentrating on the particularity, the idiosyncrasy. And most importantly, it is the how and why questions which are more suitable for a case study rather than what questions. Because the what questions are going to be more descriptive. They will provide descriptive answers. Whereas the how and why questions provide you explanations, arguments, the manner in which Something is taking place here. Something happened here. Something evolved here. So that's what, how you have to think about when you are writing out, spelling out your research problem. To summarize, 
the definition and clarification of research problem is the ideal starting point of your research project. So if you are using the case study research or case study method as your research methodology, you should be thinking about articulating or explaining or spelling out your research problem in a such a manner that you emphasize the particularity. So your research question itself should signify, manifest that you are going to theorize, that you are going to contextualize and that you are going to particularize a particular case specific set of data in order to understand why and how something is happening, something is evolving, something came to be. So that's what you have to think about when you are defining your research questions. Finally, but gradually, we are now in the last and the most important element of our discussion. That is the methodology or the methodological elements of doing a case study research. Now, when we are thinking about the methodology, methodology includes three key elements. The first key element is the logic or the justification of the specific method that you are going to follow. In this case, how do you justify case study is the most appropriate methodology for you. The second element is the data collection method, the process through which you collected the data. And the third element is data analysis, the process through which you analyze the data to arrive at your conclusions. So these are the three key elements that you have to articulate in your methodology chapter. So your methodology chapter should provide a good description, good explanation of these three key elements. Now, if you go to the first element, how do you justify your methodology? How do you justify case study as the most appropriate methodology for your research? As I mentioned in one of my other lectures, the methodology very much depends on the nature of the reality problem or the research problem that you are going to deal with. The methodological justification should stem from the nature of the problem that you are going to study. For example, as I mentioned in one of my other lectures, if you are going to explore a new planet, you can't use a microscope, but you have to use a telescope. On the other hand, if you are going to study the internal structure of a blood cell, you can't use a telescope, you have to use a microscope. So this example, very powerful but simple example, tells the connection between the methodology and the problem. The methodological choice should be always problem driven. Now, when it comes to the case study method, we already discussed in our conceptual discussion that the case study method is the most appropriate or one of the most appropriate method when the reality situation is empirically or statistically non-generalizable. So if you are dealing with a particular reality situation, which is case specific, which is situational, which is context specific, then the case study method become appropriate. So that's how you can justify your research methodology or your choice of case study as your research methodology. Now, for example, if you go back to Brendan's paper, our example paper, so Brendan's main focus, most main accounting focus is to explain, to understand how and why accounting processes evolves, especially the social accounting processes evolve. Being a post-positivistic researcher, being a critical researcher, ontologically he understands that the manner in which accounting processes evolve is contingent, is highly contextual upon the specific scenario. The manner in which accounting is being practiced, accounting practices being evolved, in a one company is not the manner in which it happens in another company. 
So the manner in which the accounting, finance, management or any other practice is being practiced, evolved is case specific. So look at this particular paper and see how Brendan explains his problem condition, her problem situation, how he explains the social accounting process, the evolution of social accounting process and that explanation provide the ground upon which the case study becomes the most appropriate method. Therefore, he has a specific case to explain how that happened in this particular company. So that's how the justification comes. And that, that, that justification is in the introduction part as well as in the methodology part. So that's about justification of your overall research methodology. Now, when it comes to the data collection, in the case of case study method, there are no any specific guideline to be set. You can use any data collection method, any form of data, as far as that data is relevant for your analysis. As far as those data provide reliable, valid evidences to create a specific story, specific narrative, and a specific argument. You can use multiple form of data, multiple sources of data. The use of multiple forms and the multiple sources of data is called data triangulation. And data triangulation is a very common popular practice among case study researchers. Now, for example, if you go to Brendan's paper here, so Brendan is using in-depth interviews and various kind of document reviews including internal memos and other documents, as well as he's doing press releases. He's using press releases and observations. So read the methodology section. He has a specific section talking about the data collection and there he explains how and why he uses multiple sources of data to collect evidences regarding his theorization or for his theorization. So to emphasize, to repeat it again, in the case of case study data, you can use any form of data, any source of data, as far as that data is relevant and as far as that data can provide a valid and reliable evidential base for your argument. And we call it data triangulation. Now, when it comes to the analysis of the data, in the case of case study method, you are not going to use any statistical analysis. For example, in the case of mainstream positivistic analysis or the hypothetical deductive research, where they are going to use a sample to generalize onto a population, you use statistics. So you can do various calculations. You calculate the mean, you calculate uh, the standard deviation, regression, p-values, and so on, so that on the basis of that calculations, you can make some conclusions about the population. That is statistical or empirical generalization valid in mainstream, positivistic, sample-based research. So in that case, analysis means use of statistics. Analysis means calculations. Now, when it comes to the case studies, when it comes to the qualitative research, when it comes to the critical research, you don't do that. You don't have such calculations. You don't have such inferences from the sample to the population. Instead, you use the data in their native form. And your theory become the analytical tool, not the statistics. The place of statistics is being used or occupied by the theory. So you use the theory or you use a, a particular theoretical framework or a set of theoretical concepts to analyze data. 
So the analysis is therefore twine in your data, twine in your empirical data with certain theoretical concepts. So you construct a particular set of themes, a particular set of arguments from the data. So rather than calculating as particular values, you are constructing a particular set of arguments, a particular set of themes using theoretical concepts, theoretical doctrines and theories in general. So that is the analysis. So what you have to do? You have to bring the theory into the data and twine the data with the theory to create your narrative, to create your story. So that is what we mean by analysis. So there you are bringing together either two or three things. On the one hand, you bring the data and the theory as well as sometimes the history. The history itself becomes sometimes an articulatory mechanism or schema of interpreting and explaining your case. Now in this case, example, Brendan's example paper, and he nicely connects these three things. He brings together the data, history, and theory to identify a particular set of themes. Now, if you read this particular paper, he identifies or he organizes his story, his narrative, his case study into four key historical paces or historical themes or historical episodes. So, as explained here. The first episode is the initial evolution of social accounting in that particular company. So he goes through the data and understand originally at the very early pace, this is how and why social accounting came into being. The social accounting at the very early stage came into being for this particular purpose in this particular manner. He explains it with the support of that data. So data in that particular articulation, in that construction of the theme, the data can become any form. So he is quoting some interview transcripts and he is taking some extract or quotations from the interviews and he is quoting from some documents and he is using some illustration from various documents and so on. So the data can come, data comes into the story in order to articulate this particular theme. And the second theme is the evolution of stakeholder dialogue and then how that social accounting process evolved into a stakeholder dialogue. So there he explained what he mean by stakeholder dialogue and what is the form the stakeholder dialogue took place in this particular organization. And he substantiate and he explains that one using various interview quotations and other documentary evidences. So data is being pushed, data is being selected and used to tell this narrative, to construct this narrative, tell this story. And thirdly, he is talking about a third phase or th third stage of the evolution of social accounting process. That is the production and management of social account. So that is a particular account that they are producing, a statement that they are producing. So how it has been produced and how it has been managed. So yet again, using various old data available to him, he constructs that narrative. He tells that particular story, how the social accounting process evolved here. And then, and finally, he talks about the currently, finally, this particular evolution emerged into a stage where there's an issue, a black hole, a substantive feedback deficiency. So ultimately, unfortunately, this whole social accounting process evolved into a kind of a deficient scenario. So he provided a critique. He provided a critique of the manner in which the social accounting process evolved in this particular organization. So that's how he analyzed his data. So go through this particular paper and any other paper which is used in a case study research, you can understand the manner in which they analyze data. So in the analysis of data, to repeat and emphasize what you do, you bring the data, you bring the conceptual or theoretical concepts and the history together in order to create a story, in order to construct a 
set of narratives based on a specific set of themes, episodes, and paces, etc. That's what you mean by analysis in a case study. So, my advice is therefore, please go through this particular paper. You can understand the process through which Brendan has done this one and think about where you can use your own data to develop such a narrative, such a story. In addition to these two key elements we discussed so far, that is definition of research problem and the methodology. In your dissertation project, you should also pay attention to two other key elements. That is the literature review and the discussion and conclusions. These are not methodologically specific. These two elements, that is the literature review and the discussion and conclusion, are applicable for any sort of research. Irrespective of whatever the methodology you are going to use, you have to have a separate chapter on literature review. And that literature review should explain and articulate the manner in which the existing literature has dealt with the specific research problem that you are discussing here. And your literature review should help you to identify a specific set of conceptual, theoretical and methodological elements according to which you can organize your methodology, you can organize your analysis and your discussions. So such a literature review is very important in any academic research. Then finally, you have to have a good discussion and conclusion. So the good dis discussion and conclusion means you are discussing either theoretical, empirical, managerial or policy implications of your case specific findings. So here you have a case and you have a set of findings, analysis, and you have a specific understanding about the manner in which the accounting phenomena that you are going to discuss is happening here. How and why? A particular practice, accounting, finance, management, political or any other form of practice is happening here. So having done that research analysis, having collected the data, you have now a, an understanding about that. Now in the discussion and conclusion, what do you do? You relate that to the existing literature. You bring back to the existing literature and discuss what is the literary, theoretical, conceptual, managerial, and policy implications of your findings. So that will provide a good conclusion for your dissertation. And with that note, I am going to finish this lecture. But before that, I would summarize the key point we discussed so far. So, divided into two parts, the case study method lecture dealt with two aspects of doing a case study. The first part dealt with the conceptual aspects. In that particular part, we discussed the overall conceptual background behind the case study method. So the key attention was on the notion of generalizability or generalization. The fact that the case studies are applicable for reality situations which are not empirically or statistically generalizable. And the specific form of generalization applicable for case study is what we call theoretical generalization. And the theoretical generalization is carried out by three interrelated analytical activities. Theorization, contextualization and particularization. Then we also discussed in this lecture at the beginning that there are two forms of case studies, educational case studies and academic case studies. Our attention was mainly on academic case studies. Educational case studies are more pedagogical and they are developed in order to replicate real life corporate or the management decision making scenarios in a classroom. 
Academic case studies are, on the other hand, have a different purpose. They are academic in nature. They are directed toward constructing theoretical conceptual understanding about the reality. Then in this lecture, we paid special attention to the technical and procedural aspects, mainly two key elements. How do you define your research problem in the light of a case study? And when you are defining and clarifying your research problem, you have to pay specific attention to the fact that your research problem is case specific. It is situational. It is context specific. It is not universal. It is not generalizable. So you define your case or your research problem in that manner. And then the second element we discussed is the methodology. When it comes to the methodology, we mentioned that there are three key elements you have to deal with. The justification of the method, data collection method, and the data analysis method. Yet again, the justification stems from the nature of the reality problem. The nature of the reality problem that the reality is situational, case specific. Therefore, the case study method is the most appropriate. When it comes to the data collection, you can use multiple form of data and multiple sources of data, which we call data triangulation. And when it comes to the data analysis, what do we mean by the data analysis is bringing at least two things together. That is theory and the data or the conceptual elements and the data. If your case study is relevant in a historical sense, then you can bring the history also into the, into the picture. So if your case study is a kind of a historical study, then you have the history, theory and the data, put them together, tell a story, construct a narrative, that's what you call analysis. So in a broader sense, in a case study research, analysis basically means constructing a set of argument and themes using theoretical concepts and the data, and if necessary, the historical context. And then finally, we also mentioned with this definition of problem and with the explanation of and use of a particular methodology, you should also have a literature review and a good discussion and conclusion. So that's the key elements we discussed in this particular lecture. So with that, I end this lecture. Thank you very much for watching this and goodbye.